Hello, it's David Williams from the Electronic Engineering Technology Department at Okanagan College and the video today is on clipper circuits. And a clipper circuit is a circuit that either cuts off or clips a part of an AC signal. And diodes are typically used to do this and you can see in this little circuit here this is a circuit to prevent a signal from driving these speakers, these headphone speakers, too loudly and these two diodes here are going to clip off any signal that's above the above their particular voltage depending on what kind of what kind of diode we're looking at here and we're going to look at a few examples of how these clipper circuits work now here's a simple clipper circuit and before we get into details I should note that this circuit as well as the ones following ones in this in this video are taken from Tony Kupalt's documentation that can be found at the website allaboutcircuits.com. Uh, it's a great electronics document online online textbook covering the spectrum of AC and DC electrical circuits, semiconductors, digital circuits, all sorts of in, all sorts of really good information and so these examples are taken straight from that that document. So what's happening in this circuit? Well, during the positive half of the cycle this diode here is going to be reverse biased which means that no current will be flowing in the circuit therefore there is not going to be any voltage drop across this one kilo ohm resistor so the voltage probes here that are measuring at the top here and at the bottom here are going to measure the full voltage swing so I'm just drawing it slightly offset I can here just so to they, they should be they should be basically the same I'm just showing it offset a little bit so you can see both of the signals so that's in the positive half of the input signal the output signal which is the one V2 here is uh, is going to be the exact same so on the negative half of the cycle this voltage here needs to be about 0.7 volts higher than the voltage on this side in order for this diode to become forward biased and then the voltage across the diode is not going to change much from that 0.7 volts and that's not going to happen until our input voltage gets down to about minus 0.7 volts and then at that point it's going to be a constant 0.7 volts and then at this point again when the inputs at about about minus 0.7 volts the diodes are going to become going to become reverse biased again and then the input and the output the output will follow the input and we're just going to get this signal repeating over and over and over again so here again the diode is forward biased so it's 0.7 volts across it and we're going to get this repeating over and over again and it's basically cut off most of the negative part of the cycle now this circuit adds a second diode in the opposite orientation as the first diode so when one of these diodes is forward biased the other one's sure to be reverse biased and then we'll, what we'll see is there'll be a, a period where neither one of them is, is forward biased so starting with the at the beginning here the the input voltage which I've designated here with the the red signal that input voltage there is at zero volts so zero volts applied across this diode and applied across this diode means that both of these diodes are going to be reverse biased there's no current flowing in either one of them now as the voltage starts to increase once it gets above 0.7 volts this diode here the first diode is going to become forward biased and therefore it's going to maintain its 0.7 volts approximately current will be going through it and will maintain that 0.7 volts until we get to the point where the input signal drops down below 0.7 volts and now that diode is again reverse biased no current will be going through it no currents going through the other one either so the full voltage from the input or whatever the input voltage is will be seen at the output now going in the negative direction this side of the diode needs to be at a higher voltage than this side of the diode so we need to get down to an input voltage of about minus 0.7 volts before this diode will become forward biased and start conducting so up until that point the output will follow the input and then at about 0.7 volts from the input the output's going to maintain that 0.7 volts and then when the input again gets below points or negative 0.7 volts 
the diode will again become reverse biased. No current going through this diode, no current going through this diode. So whatever is at the input is going to be, show be showing up at the output. And so we get a positive clipping, a clipping on the positive side, as well as a clipping on the negative side. And hopefully you can see from these two examples that if I had only this, this diode, uh, the, the one that's forward biased when the input signal is positive, then what I would have is a clipping of the positive part of the cycle. Now one more example to show you. I'm just going to draw this one on the fly here. Now this one's a little bit different in that we're going to have a diode here as well as a DC offset applied to this diode and a second diode over here in the opposite orientation and also along with a DC biasing to offset it some, somewhat. So we're going to have our 5 volt input signal again at 1 kilohertz, although the frequency in this case doesn't really matter so much because I don't care about the time scale. Um, the, the, what is important though here is the, are these two, what are, what are these two offsets? Well this first one is going to be at 1.3 volts the second one is going to be at 2.3 volts, but you see it's in the opposite orientation, so relative to this one, it's negative 2.3 volts. And then I'll have my output over here. I'll do my output in blue. V out, and my input is red. So what apply, what's applied by this, this uh, sinusoidal source. And I'm going to need to plot this out. So again I have a sinusoidal input with a 5 volt peak and let's take a look at what happens at the output when we apply this input signal. Well this input in order for this particular diode to become forward biased we need to have 0.7 volts across it but we also have this offset of 1.3 volts so we're actually going to need to have relative to to um, the ground point I guess or the zero volt reference from from this sinusoidal input we're going to need to be 0.7 volts above 1.3 volts we're going to actually need to be at 2 volts before this diode right here becomes forward biased when it's not forward biased let's say on the positive part of the cycle this one is definitely not going to be forward biased, but on the positive part of the cycle when this one is not forward biased, we'll have no current flowing through either one of these diodes. No current in either one of the diodes. So no current through this resistor, no voltage drop across the resistor, so therefore the V out has to follow the V in. So on this positive half of the cycle we'll have the V out following V in up until, I probably drew that too high, up until about two volts. So that's that point's two volts even though it's probably not quite to scale since this point up here is five volts. So at two volts and then at two volts the diode becomes forward biased no more no more voltage drop because it's just going to take uh, take all the current through it. Now going in the negative in the negative cycle this point over here has to be 0.7 volts above this point over here but we have this biasing offset from this 2 point, th we've got this offset from this 2.3 volt source. So the second diode will not become forward biased until the input signal gets 0.7 volts below negative 2.3 volts. So in other words at, at minus 3 volts that's when this diode here becomes forward biased. In the negative half of the cycle of course this diode is always be, will always be for reverse biased so no current will be through this diode but it's not until at a minus 3 volt input that this diode becomes forward biased so current will go through that so we're going to have we're going to have clipping at that minus 3 volt point so no clipping no clipping no clipping at minus 3 volts we have clipping so right at that point we're going to have, be at minus 3 volts and then when the input falls again below minus 3 volts the output will follow the input neither the neither of the diodes is forward biased and then we get up to plus two volts clipping due to the first diode becoming forward biased 
and then way over here we'll have clipping due to the second diode becoming forward biased and this is just going to repeat itself over and over and over again so we're able to clip at 2 volts and minus 3 volts. Now one major practical application of this is if you want, wanted to create a halfway rectifier and one that cuts off half of the half of the signal, either the positive half or the negative half. Uh, stay tuned for a video on that in the near future but a couple of other or at least one other reason that you would need to have clippers like this uh, is for protection, and we saw some. We saw that actually in the beginning there with the well, with the clipper that was clipping off the audio signal, so it wouldn't drive the headphones to be too loud, so that when you're listening to it, you won't become deaf, hopefully. But let's say we have a here's here's another example of protection. So let's say this is an IC. I'm just going to draw this roughly here. That has a five volt supply referenced here to to uh, the ground signal, and at one of the inputs here, this is an input signal maybe coming from uh, an analog voltage or maybe it's even a digital signal either a one or a zero a five volt or a zero volt but there is the potential that this signal or this pin here could be driven to a voltage higher than five volts or lower than ground which could cause could potentially cause some problems um, depending if the, that in the internal circuitry whatever is in here can handle that high voltage but we can protect against that by connecting two diodes. One diode like this to ground and one diode like this to the power supply, the VCC or VDD or whatever you want to call it. And then this is going to go to the circuitry, to the circuit. Now if this voltage falls below zero volts by some amount depending on the forward bias of this diode the forward voltage of this diode falls below zero volts this diode all of a sudden becomes it becomes forward biased and we will have current through this diode as opposed to current into the circuit as opposed to over voltage into the circuits we're going to have clipping at something around minus 0.7 volts or minus 0.3 volts depending on the type of diode the, the type of diode this is and similarly here on the second diode if the input voltage gets above 5.3 volts, 5.7 volts, again depending on the forward voltage of this diode. If that voltage gets above that point, this diode becomes forward biased and it clips the voltage that's going to the circuit to about 5.3 to 5.7 volts and protects the circuit from over any over voltage. So I hope you learned a little bit about clipping circuits in this video and I will see you in the next one.